Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. I would love if you hit the uh, like button for today and also subscribe if you aren't already. I'd also love if you left a comment about your favorite tip or trick that you see in the video. It really helps the algorithm and it really helps me and I super appreciate it. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I was in Sam's and I found um, this item that was over on the like the kitchenware's item and they call it a bus box. And what it is, it's like if you go to the restaurant and the, um, the busser comes out to clean the table, they have that uh, plastic, um, kind of like a bucket, and they put all the dirty dishes and stuff in it. So it's a good sized, heavy duty bucket. And I thought that would be a great way to organize a large working project. So like a full size quilt, in other words. I felt like it was big enough to hold all of the bits and pieces and the notes and all of the stuff. And what's nice is you could corral all of the stuff with the project in that one place and n not feel so pressured to have to just like crank it all out at once. That's a big thing that I personally have struggled with when I start on a large project, like a full-sized bed quilt. I feel like because I have limited space, my room is kind of unusual. I don't really have built-in cupboards or closets. Everything is just kind of out there. And I don't have like a, a good place to put things away and store it and organize it while I'm working on something. So I have felt like I just almost have to kill myself to crank things out right away. Otherwise, I can't keep it straight and it's hard to get back to the project and just, I don't know, it was a lot. So. I um, I found something I wanted to make and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back, I'm going to get the bus box and I'm going to try it and see how it works. And today is kind of a check-in with you, so I want to show you how I'm using that bus box <laughs> and I want to show you the project I'm working on and uh, I'm doing some things, I don't know if they're unique, but it's just a... a um, I don't know what to call it exactly, but it's like, it's a way that I have found to, to keep my stuff organized and to not feel completely overwhelmed with the project because this is, this is a personal project. I'm making this because I want to, uh, but I want to share it with you. Uh, so how do I say this? Those stupid scam calls, they're driving me nuts. I, I don't know. Uh, how it's going for you, but for me, I'm getting them like, I don't know, a dozen a day right now. It is driving me bananas. I wish they would stop. And I'll tell you something. <laughs> I had one yesterday or the day before from Russia. I don't know anybody in Russia. That freaked me out. It's like, why am I getting a call from there? It said scam likely in Russia. And I took a screenshot of the, the call and <laughs> put it on the screen so you can see it. it just flips me out. It's, uh, I'll tell you this, in the early days of when the, the whole <laughs> thing was going on or the CV, can't really use that word because you can get flagged, but anyway, uh, the health crisis, when that started up, I was getting a bunch of weird phone calls and they were all coming from China, which really weirded me out. And they all had uh, I'm the, like the Chinese characters and all of that. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so that just seemed weird. And I'll tell you what else. My website is under constant hacking attempts and malicious threats. It is insane right now. The amount of cyber attacks that are going on out there, uh, it would blow your mind if you really knew <laughs> what's going on. Uh, if you notice YouTube being glitchy and things going on, that's probably part of it. It's 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 for real. This the cyber war is hot and heavy. It's going on. So if you have any online real estate, um, I would really suggest that you lock it down tight. I'll tell you, I use and this is not sponsored, um, but I use something called WordFence as my security app. WordFence for the win. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for WordFence being on my site, I probably wouldn't have my domain anymore. So anyway, that's just 
some of what goes on in the background. And it's just crazy because I'm just, you know, it's just me. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm a regular person like you are. I just happen to, you know, put some stuff on the internet to share with everybody. It's my, it's my work at home adventure is what it is. And uh, to think that people from all over the world are coming after me, it just, I don't know. Sometimes uh, I wonder about modern life. Okay, all of that aside, uh, the upside is I get to talk to you and share some of my own tips and tricks and things I'm doing. And with any luck, this will help some of you out there as well. Um, if you want to know more about the bus box, there's a video I did a couple of weeks ago where I went to Sam's and I'll link that below. You can go back and look at that. It's pretty short and you can see some other things that I found in there that I thought were good to use in a sewing room. So um, I don't really have a good plan for this. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to turn the camera and I'll let you see my uh, work table as I have it currently set up and then I'll get the bus box and I'll show you what's in there. And uh, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't really have a plan for this. I'm just kind of talking to you and um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, uh, let's turn the camera. Okay, here's my tabletop as I've got it set up right now. And uh, if you don't know, I use a kitchen island that I uh, purchased and put together from Ikea and it's called the Tornviken Kitchen Island, and I absolutely love this thing. It has been wonderful to work with. If I had the space, I'd get another one, and I would probably butt them up to each other, and then I'd have two layers of shelves and double the workspace on top. But anyway, even just the single one, it works fantastic. And my current setup, has been to use that smaller sized cutting mat. I used to use all the really big ones and I have not been using them recently. I've been using the smaller one, which has worked well for quilting. And then over to the left, I have invested in a rotating mat and I love that thing. Oh my gosh. I do so many half square triangles and now I've been playing with flying geese and there's a lot of trimming. So that rotating mat has been amazing. And then if you look in the uh, far left upper corner, you can see my ruler roundup in use. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I love that thing. Now that was sent uh, from Missouri Star. And I absolutely just think that thing is amazing. So highly, highly recommend the ruler roundup. And I'll give you a link to that. Um, yeah, okay, but we're not talking about my setup. I think I'll do like a table setup video for you. What you can also notice when you look at this table is to the right hand side, I've got some fabrics laid out and uh, the point of those fabrics, uh, those are ones that I've paired for the uh, next batch of uh, sewing and piecing that I'm going to do on today's quilt. So um let's see here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna walk over and i'm gonna get the box the bus box and i'll put it on the tabletop and then i'll move the uh, the camera so that you can uh, better see what i pull out and what i have okay there's the box oh and you know one more thing i'll say to you is i wound up getting a second uh, grow light <laughs> and you can see i've got it over top of the sewing table or excuse me the work table so now I'm using two of them and I really like it, but I have my eye on a high powered ot light that I really, really would like to get uh, to go on the sewing table. So uh, after I pay out the bills here um, this weekend, I'm gonna see uh, if I can swing it. And I think I can, and I'm going to just go ahead and order that. So new light on the way. But anyway, look at the size of the bus box. I mean, it's a good size. Uh, I will measure it out and put those measurements for you on the screen so that you have an idea of the size of it. You know, the only thing I can say about it that I, I'm not crazy about is the color. The color is really not my jam. 
Um, but you know, it's not supposed to be a pretty sewing room thing. It's supposed to be for cleaning tables in a restaurant. Um, and because of that reason, it's waterproof, right? So if anything happens, the stuff inside of the box won't get wet. And also it's heavy duty. So it's going to last me. Like I won't have to repurchase this again. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, move us in closer and set up so that you can see exactly what I've got in there. And I'll talk to you about how I'm keeping myself organized with this uh, current project. Okay, so what I have in here is um, the pattern and uh, just different fabrics that I've grabbed and corralled and uh, some of the blocks that I've already made. Uh, but here's what I'll show you. So I am making a pattern that is in uh, this um, Better Homes and Gardens Quilts and More. And this is uh, from, I guess it was probably March and April and I get a subscription to this magazine and I'm I'm telling you guys I love this magazine the Better Homes and Gardens quilting magazines they are my favorite they always have projects that I want to make and I've done several magazines but the Better Homes and Gardens are they they're the ones that I recommend and really do use so anyway the project is this cover image and I loved that and let's see so it's called you've got mail and there's the project i just thought it was so cute uh let me see well, here's like the okay here's the full-on illustration so you can really see what's happening so you've basically got mm, three or four different kinds of blocks. So what you have going is the open envelopes and then you've got some closed envelopes and then you've got the envelope with the address on it. And uh, then you've got just like three blanks in there. So what I've been doing is working my way through the open envelopes and uh, each one of those uh, takes a fabric, a contrast fabric, and then the main fabric, which is the body of the envelope, with the background. And what's really fun about this is she used a Ruby Star fabric as her background fabric, and it's from the uh, Pearl collection. Super cute. Um, so what I did was started with making the open envelope block. And it's uh, actually two blocks. So you have this block, which is this part of the envelope, and then this. And so what I decided to do was to just go ahead and make all of those at first and put them to the side. And then I could fill in with what I'm calling the half envelopes, which are up here. And uh, then I'll do these last because they're kind of picky. Um, but I'll tell you something, and I've shared this with you before. I have trouble following uh, patterns and instructions. And it's just a way my brain works. And I have trouble following those standard instructions. And so I always have to find a way that works for me. And so what I did through trial and error was I figured out my little... Um, recipe for making uh, that particular quilt block and I wrote all of my instructions out <clears throat> and this is really nice it's like if you are going to be working on something over time and you have a similar style blocks you know make your notes okay and then keep it with your pattern and uh, this was really nice because I, I worked on it and then I didn't work on it for a week or two and I came back and I had my instructions and I could follow my instructions to figure out how to make the new blocks. And it was really, really nice. So definitely have notes. And then what I wound up doing was, it's like a lot of times with these projects, um, it's an overwhelming amount of information. And I have to find ways to break it down into smaller bits and pieces. And so what I wound up doing was counting out all those different kinds of blocks 
So I called this the full block, and when I counted, I needed 28. And then for the what they call the half blocks, which are these, I need eight of those. And four of them are with a print, and uh, four of them are with background fabric. And so I wrote that out. And then I need just three of the plain blocks, which are right here. And then I need four of the envelopes, which are these. Okay, so that's what I did to split out what I needed. And then I decided, like I said, to just start with the full. And so, uh, you know, every time I have a session and I make some, I just um, mark how many I've got made. And then I know where I am in the pattern. So at this point, I have 18 of those made. So when I finish the 28, then I'll go on and I'll finish out what I need for the half size blocks. And then I'll get busy on the envelope blocks. They're a little more complicated. They're just small pieces. So I'll show you that. I don't want to give too much away on the pattern because, you know, that's just not a good practice. But here's this. I'll tell you, let me find the, the designer's name. Okay, so the designer's name is Katie Rosa. And she really got detailed. So what she wound up doing was when she did her addressed envelopes, she went in and um, like uh, embroidered um, names and addresses, which is really cute. But I don't know that I want to go to that much detail. <laughs> I'll probably figure out something else. I'll try to find something that has actual handwriting and use that. But um, it's a very cute idea. Uh, she has a quilt store. Let me see if I can find that in here. <sighs> I can't find it. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll 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 put it in the uh, I'll link over to it as I can find it, uh, and I'll put the name of it in the 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 writing down below so that you can see it. Um, but this is super nice. So what am I saying? So she gave you uh, the standard quilt, which is this one. Okay. And then over here, they give you optional sizes. So she gave the instructions to do um, a mini, a baby sized, and a, a twin bed sized. But as I started making the pieces, I just liked them so much. I wanted to keep going. <laughs> so I did. And they also did this, which I thought was cute. Uh, this is an organizer. And they have that as a free pattern. So this is through allpeoplequilt.com. I'll put the um, I'll put the the, the uh, link below for you uh, in the the caption. And um, she made it like for uh, to store your I guess your mail in and mail out desk organize desk organizer, which is really cute. So. Anyway, what am I getting at? What I'm getting at is, uh, you know, keep your notes, break your overall project into smaller pieces, and then make your own notes. And then as you make some stuff, you know, tick off what you have done so that you know where you are in the process. And, you know, if you need notes to remind yourself of what you did, go ahead and take the notes. Uh, these are all... Uh, quarter square triangles and you know they're a little they're a little you know different from the half square triangles they uh, definitely the trick to them is because everything is a bias edge so you're dealing with so much bias and it's really easy for things to get stretched out so here is one of the uh, like the half envelopes and I wound up having one like that. And then here's the reverse. And I just thought they were so pretty. So I have two of those done. And then I did something kooky. I don't know what I did, but I wound up with a little one. But it's so cute, I kept it. I'm not sure what I'm doing with it, but it'll get used for something. So uh, I wound up using Ruby Star because I had just umpteen ruby star fat quarters in my stash 
and I was like, all right, I'm really starting to accumulate a lot of these. So I wanted to start using them. Oh, this is, um, so this is the, uh, the uh, half envelopes using the background as the main print. So I have two of those done. And I wound up going with, so I used Ruby Star for my prints and my background is something called uh, Lipstick Cowgirl. And I had purchased it for a different project, but honest to goodness, it's a really nice neutral because it's not too neutral, uh, but with the color, like it's got a gradation. So it goes from a white to a, a buff beige. And then it's got splatters of a, like, a, like an aqua and maybe like a cherry pink and a gold, so there's that red, blue, and yellow again that I like so much, but it goes with everything. So I decided to use that for my background, and I really, really like it as a background. So this is how the uh, full-sized envelope block looks. So you've got your little envelope down there, and up here is where you've got the, uh, the flap is up. And it's basically two quarter square triangles and then you're matching the small triangle together and you know this is tricky because if you've got a directional print you can see my like sun faces are going everywhere so uh, if I wanted all of my faces to be going the same way that would be a whole lot of um, mental gymnastics and because all of these things are fat quarters I really didn't have the yardage to be figuring that out. So I just, you know, I just did the best I could do. And then what I found out, let me leave you with this also, when I did this uh, through how I was making them, I wound up getting uh, two of each style every time. So um, I'm not really sure how else I would have done it. But every time I made one, I actually wound up getting two. But that's kind of nice because then it lets me finish the project a little bit faster. And uh, I just really had fun pairing the prints together. Here's another one with that face. That's so cool. This one, oh gosh, I just love them all. This one is um, a recent fat quarter bundle and most of this I got through those fat quarter uh, clubs I was in on um, fat quarter shop and if you watch the most recent Ruby Star video you'll recognize this Terrytown and it's so cute in the project and then this one is the Stay Gold those beautiful moths and butterflies. And this uh, print, I really wound up liking quite a bit. I'd like to have more of that if I could find it. And uh, I think the last one I'll leave you with is this one with the bird. So I paired the bird with that peach moon. And I just felt like even though they're all different collections and whatever, different years, I think it all works really well together. So I have quite a few of those. According to my notes, according to my notes, I have 18. Seems like it's more than that, so I'll have to double check my math. But um, yeah, those are really coming along. And then, um, what else can I tell you? So I wound up, this is big enough that I can put all of those pieces down into inside. And then I wound up having like this orphan to half square triangle. I decided to save that. I might use that instead of just the plain blocks. I don't know yet. Uh, but all of these I've already cut from. So I'm just leaving them in the box until I'm basically finished with the project. And then there's a bunch of um, triangles. So I just kept them. Right, so they're just kind of hanging out in the box until um, I, I kind of have that quilt top together. So 
So those I just put in there, but it all just goes so nice right in there. And then, you know, I just, I pulled a whole bunch of fabrics from my uh, fat quarter stash and I just put them all in there. And there's like plenty of room for you to do that. These are all fat quarters that I wrapped on the comic book boards. And, you know, I really like it because it makes it a super easy way to audition your fabrics together. I mean, it's so much easier to be able to hold them like that on the cardstock than to have something that's floppier, you know, and just try to figure out if you want to match something. I just, I, I love everything wrapped on the, on the cardstock. And then this, I don't think I've shown you that. This was an Etsy find. But I just um, can put everything right into the, the box and it fits fine. No problem. So it's just a nice way to keep everything corralled. It's just, and you can see, I mean, there's, there's a lot of room in there. Um, over here, so these are the other fabrics I've pulled. Uh, to put together and so like I've put the faces with uh, the blue and again you know it's nice because it's on that cardstock so I could um, see them together and see these are not on the cardstock they just for whatever reason were not wrapped they were probably still in the fat quarter bundle but I like those together and they're from the same collection. They're from that pearl collection. And this actually is what she used, what the designer used for her background only in the darker colorway, which is kind of cool. And then I put those together. Cause you know, it's like there's really fancy envelopes that have the, the different interior from the exterior. That was my mindset on this. So, you know, what I can do, I laid them out, so they're, they're kind of just waiting for me to work. And I just put them here, but what I could do is I could also just toss them right in. So I have three pairings. Uh, that would give me six more blocks. So if I have 18, that gives me, uh, what, 24. So then I only need to do four more. So we need two more pairings, but it's like I just take it in small chunks. And I gotta tell you, this really has taken a lot of stress off of me because uh, I just toss everything in, it's there. And then when I have a little bit of time and I can just work on the blocks, I can work on the blocks. And then I have my notes. So I remember <laughs> what I did the last time because I'm gonna tell you something. I can't remember squat right now. So anyway, I have to have everything written down or I just, I, I can't do it. Um, so yeah, this, this has worked really well. Um, it's really kept everything corralled and it's organized. I was able to really do a nice straighten up over on the area over there. Um, I got some bins also at Home Depot that really helped me to corral some of the smaller pieces and some of the scraps and leftovers so that was nice but this has been fantastic so yeah the bus box really worked and uh, the other one they come two to a set the other one I have uh, the batting that I bought I'll show you that batting is kind of crazy it's like giant Get it on here where you can see it. So I mean, it's it's as big as the whole busing box, but I got it because um, they were having a half off sale on Joanne, and then I got like another twenty five percent off or something, and then a um, dollar ninety nine shipping, because uh, you can't get this in the store here. So uh, I went ahead and got two of them, and I might. Uh, see if I can get another two or three to put away because um, it is cotton. Uh, this is a Pellon product and it's um, made in the U.S. and 100% uh, cotton. And this can be uh, machine washed. 
and it only shrinks three to five percent which isn't bad uh, it's not a real high loft I really wanted something lofty uh, but you know we do what we can do I will tell you and I know you guys a lot of you do not like the <laughs> the, the, the prepping talk or the doomsday talk but uh, the cotton crop this year is not good and uh, I think we're going to have some issues getting cotton for a number of reasons next year. So uh, if you can think ahead and plan ahead a little bit and get yourself some uh, batting and thread and if you can at all put away some um, fabrics, I, I would recommend it. But uh, anyway, you can see everything goes right in there. And so this is my first time using this product. Generally, I use the uh, other stuff that's the 80-20. I've never used 100% cotton. I really wanted wool, but they didn't have any wool batting. I couldn't find it. Uh, but I wanted that basically for the warmth because I'm expecting us to not be running the heat like we normally do this year. So anyway, I couldn't find it, so I went with the cotton. But I'll tell you, the quilt I'm currently using is a cotton batting. I think I did 80-20 with that and it's very warm. So I thought, well, if I did, you know, a couple of them, that should be warm enough, hopefully. But uh, yeah, so there we go. So now in this one box, I have my batting, I have all my fabrics, and uh, yeah, I can just put this to the side and everything I need for this quilt is in one place. You know, if I wanted to, I could put the thread in there with it. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to use my basic thread uh, like I use. Uh, I think it's Ermine in the RFL 50 weight. That's what I use for everything. I have some color thread uh, that's left over from some old craftsy kits. So I might try to use a color with this uh, to, to use some of the colors, but we'll see. Um, I have not picked a backing. And, uh, of course, I would love to do Ruby Star yardage for the backing. I'll have to think about it because it's kind of expensive. I have to consider it. Uh, but I'm going to also have to get something to do uh, the, uh, the border and the binding. And I haven't figured that part out yet. So I'll have to get on the stick, <laughs> figure that out. And what I want for backing, I'm kind of at this point leaning towards the 108 uh, the wide back from Joanne because it's it's a lot less money and I'm not as attached to the backing as I am to the quilt top in this case anyway you know if money were no object of course it would be nice so you know in my case uh, I don't get to live the lifestyle where money is no object uh, <laughs> unfortunately so I might have to rethink the Ruby Star uh, yardage for the backing, even though that would be amazing. Uh, I probably will have to do uh, something much less expensive so that I can um, afford to have this finished sooner than later. Because I'll already have to buy um, probably a yard. I'll probably need two yards to do the border that I'd like to do. So I could do something special with that. And I'll need at least a yard for the uh, the binding so you know these things all add up and uh, at that point you're into it like 30 bucks plus shipping so to have to do another like five yards for backing that's that's okay that's getting crazy so uh, probably what's going to happen is there's going to be a Joanne sale and I'm going to use a coupon <laughs> and I'm going to get the the 108 wide back and just um, you know make the compromise. The nice thing is that the quilt top itself is going to be all this really beautiful uh, combo of the Ruby Star with the Lipstick Cowgirl. I think the Lipstick Cowgirl is Moda, but I'm not sure. I'll, I'll look and see and I'll give you that information. I bought it first uh, way back at the beginning of last summer. So what I had in my stash I've had for a while, I used it with the um, the Valentine, uh, the Three Hearts table runner that I made. That has the same background. I love the stuff. I ran out while I was making this. I had to order some more of that. So I ordered 
think I ordered three or four yards of it because I like it so much I wanted to have plenty for uh, other projects and it's kind of like when it's gone it's gone and the original project that I got to go with it is still sitting here and I haven't even started on that. I'm not even entirely sure where I put those items. It's a panel print. I think it's down here in the stash but I'll have to look and I'm not going to take up your time to do that. I hope that gave you just like, I don't know, some little tidbits that you can use at home and uh, your quilting, um, in your quilting life and um, just to get better organized because, you know, it can be really stressful with these large works in progress to keep it all together. And with this, I can have everything together. And maybe there is something that is already out there that does this. I was not aware of anything <clears throat> unless of course you get like a uh, like a kit but you know the kit is really only designed to hold the you know the pieces before you start the cutting and sewing. I mean once you start cutting and sewing it, they get it grows you know it just gets bigger as you unfold and then cut and sew and you know you don't want to be folding up your quilt blocks any more than necessary because then they start to get you know, wrinkled, and we don't want to do that. Anyway, I hope it was useful for you. I thought I would share it with you. I've been talking with a couple of friends over text messages about it, and they were interested to see what I was doing. And, you know, it's just a really easy way for me to share with my real life friends what I'm doing here on YouTube, as well as with all of you, my wonderful, lovely virtual friends. Although you are real people, so you're not really virtual. So it's a great way for me to share with my real life friends how I'm managing things and doing some things. And I thought that all of you would enjoy seeing it as well. That's the video for today. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being here. And uh, before you go, why don't you let us know in the comments uh, different ways that you keep your large projects organized. Do you already have something like this box? Do you have something else that you have come up with for yourself, whatever it is you use, I would love to hear about it. And I'm sure other people who come across this video would also like to uh, just get some other ideas for how to keep all of this organized. But for me, this really works. Okay, that's it. Thank you as always. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy quilting.